Lord Jesus Christ. It's not a laughing matter. It makes me sorrowful. It makes me, it makes me feel down in my spirit. My heart's broken because I think about how deceived people are. I think about how much you've departed from God's love. You need him to, to comfort you. God wants to comfort you. God wants to bless you. God wants to protect you. Don't you see that he can, he can help you out? He can protect you from your deadly enemies, those who rise up against you. There are many who are against you. There are many who will say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift up the light of your countenance upon us. Lord, you will put gladness in our heart more than in the season that your grain and wine have increased. God, he makes things increase, but you know what? He puts gladness in man's heart greater than that. You can go down to Walmart and see all the increase of this land that God puts gladness in a man's heart. Because he loves righteousness and he hates wickedness. That's what the testimony of Jesus Christ. You love what is good. You cling to what is good. You follow what is good. Who is good? Who is good out here? Are you good? No, I'm not good. I'm not good. There's only one who is good. Only one is good. His name is Jesus. The good shepherd who gives his life for the sheep. Jesus Christ is the good shepherd. Praise God. Praise God that he laid his life down for the sheep. He wasn't afraid of the wolf. He didn't care if it cost him his life. He said, oh, I die for the sheep. I know the sheep. The sheep know my voice. They don't follow the voice of strangers. Don't you understand? The Bible said, Jesus said, all who are of the truth, they know and they hear my voice. They will not follow another. Sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I love you. Forever I stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Oh, Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. Let every breath, let all that I am, never cease to worship you, Lord. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I love you, forever I stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Are you against or for homosexuality? I'm for God. I stand in Christ's stead. I come out here, I stand for the word of God, the truth found in the Bible. So are you saying that homosexuals can date or marry? No, man. We came to, we came to give you the truth. You know, the Bible says that the spirit is truth. The Word of God, the Spirit of God, found in the Bible, the testimony of Jesus Christ is true. Don't you understand that there's no other truth apart from God? There's no other way to God, to eternal life, without Jesus Christ and Him crucified? I'm sorry, but wait. No other way. I'm just asking you. I believe in Jesus Christ, and I believe in God. Okay. But do you think homosexuality is a sin? I'm getting to that, but I think I want to establish some of the authority first. Because I think, I, think, I think you have a conscience. You're created in God's image, fearfully and wonderfully made, created with a purpose in this life. You know, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18 says this, Pride comes before a fall and a haughty spirit before destruction. Better to be of humble spirit with the lowly than to, to divide the spoils with the proud. To divide the spoils with the proud. So let me ask you this. What is, what is going on out here? What is going on out here on the streets of St. Petersburg, Florida? Sounds like pride to me. And the Bible says pride comes before a fall. God didn't, didn't create you to fall into hell, to be destroyed because you would, you would not repent. You don't think, you, know, you don't understand that, you know, even the demons believe in God. You can say, I believe in God. I'm a believer. I follow God somehow, but that you live in sin. It's not the way of life, folks. You know, the Bible says the way of life, it winds upward, away from hell beneath. You know, the things of sin, the things of homosexuality are things of this earth, the things from beneath. You got it wrong. God, God, God loves Jesus Christ. God, God loves the righteous things of life. You know, the Bible says, the word of God, it says that 
By this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He who says, I know God, does not keep his commandments, it says is a liar, and the truth is not in him. I just believe the Bible. I came out here as a representation of somebody who trusts in God. I trust in the Bible. You can say that, that love is just, just accepting people, letting them go on and destroy themselves. You know, the proverb, it says, it says folly is, is, a, is a joy to him who is destitute of discernment. Do you understand? That's Proverbs 15, 21. You see, folly, this lifestyle of folly, of wickedness and lewdness, it's a joy to you who are destitute of discernment. There's no discernment in this lifestyle. There's no wisdom, no knowledge, no understanding. You're not seeking knowledge and wisdom. You're seeking to have a good time. You're seeking to get high on drugs, seeking to drink alcohol and fool around with your neighbors. And you think that God just loves that? God throws people into hell for much worse things than what goes on on this street. For much, for much, for much less things. Oh, I'm giving you a righteous judgment. I'll tell you the way out. Jesus Christ. Jesus. No, don't be tripped up by the Old Testament commandment. You try to use the Old Testament to excuse the the reality of hell that you're walking in. The Bible says it says the wicked will be turned into hell, and all the nations who forget God. You know, this nation obviously has forgotten God. What happened, what happened yesterday? Forgotten the word of God. They forgot They forgot that the Bible says that homosexuality is an abomination to God. It's an abomination. God is not looking favorably. There's diseases. There's judgments upon your life. There's, there's great sorrow. You know what it says? It says? It says that he has made a pit. It says that he has made a pit and dug it out. And he has fallen into the, into the old pit that he made. You're falling into the pit that you've made. You know, it says the wicked, it says that they, they, uh, that they can, it says, behold, the wicked brings forth iniquity. Yes, he conceives trouble and brings forth falsehood. The wicked, they, they can, the, 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 the Psalm chapter 7, according to you, it says the wicked, they just conceive trouble. They bring forth iniquity. They birth it. That's what happens when you live in sin. You're conniving against the, against the word of God. No, it's not true. Don't judge me. You said I don't judge. You don't know. How do you, look at this. Look at here. You're wearing no clothes. The cops should be arresting you. Cops should be arresting you. Turn around. Look at what's going on here. No, that's not in the Bible. The Bible says in, in the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 13 verse 8 it says that God's going to consume its sinners from the land. God's going to destroy the sinners from the land from the land, the world. Look, 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 look. Look, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 3, it says, it says, in this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. He who does not practice righteousness is not of God. Notice he does not love his neighbor. Now you don't know what love is though. The Bible says, let us love one another. Let us love one another, but not as Cain, who was of the wicked one, who murdered his brother. Why did he murder him? It says because his works were evil and his brothers were righteous. You see, that's the difference. The love you have is a murdering love. The love that you say you have causes you to, to fight against God, pursue, uh, to, to, to persecute the preaching. To per, you, know, you try you come up and you put your foot down against God and say, God, no, I'm not going to repent. You know what? God is still loving. God is still sitting on the throne trying to give you mercy, trying to hold you back from dying in your sin. Could be tonight, your last breath. No one knows the hour. No one knows the day. No one knows the time when you're going to be called into account, give account for every idle word that you've ever spoken. Don't you fear God? Don't you know that Jesus Christ lives and reigns? Hey, forever! You're not going to change who he is because you want to live in sin. No, you want to try to make a you want to try to make an excuse. Why don't you humble yourself before God, cry out to Him, acknowledge Him, glorify Him? Isn't He worthy of glory? Look at all the look at all the beautiful things He's given you. Look at look at what you have. Shouldn't you shouldn't you give God your heart? Shouldn't you give God your your testimony? You need a testimony. That's what the Bible says. It says, it says, three, these three things, it says, testify, it says they agree on one another the, in heaven. They agree in heaven, the Father, the Spirit, and the Word. These three are one, they agree together. There's three that bear witness on earth. The Spirit, the blood, and the water. It says, and these three are, agree as one. It says, it says, if you receive the witness of man, how much greater is the witness of God? And God has testified, it says, that Jesus Christ is the only way to eternal life. This is the testimony that God has given us, eternal life, it says. And that life is in his Son. That life is not in anything else except for the Son of God. It says, I write to you these things that you might believe, that you may know that you have eternal life, that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God, it says. You've got to continue. You can't come short. That's what you've done. Many of you, you maybe you started off in a church. You, know, you went to church, you prayed a prayer, you started living right. You, you truly repented and, and, and glorified and magnified and, and you really appreciated God's love and grace towards you, but then you turned back. Oh, and you thought that that's, the, that's just okay. It's not okay. 
It's not okay for you to turn back to your sin. Psalms chapter 5, it says that God will destroy those who forsake him. God's going to destroy those who speak falsehood. Oh, he's weak. The Bible says you are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness, nor shall evil dwell with you. You, it says, the boastful will not stand in your sight. You hate all workers of iniquity, it says. Oh, but as for me, as for me, I will come into your house in the multitude of your mercies, and I will worship in fear towards you, towards your holy temple. Oh, Lord, my God, lead me in your righteousness. Lead me. Don't you want to be led in this righteousness? I see the goodness of God. I've seen the beauty of God. This is not beauty. This is not beautiful what you're doing out here. But you see the problem here? God can't extend his hand out to you. I'm here so that you might uh, escape the judgment that's coming. There's judgment coming for you. Judgments. Judgments. The Bible says that judgments are prepared for scoffers and beatings for the backs of fools. That's, that's proper. No, it's the Bible. According to you, it's proper. Why is that so judgmental? You're applying it to yourself because you know you're scoffing. You know that you're, you're, you're following the way that's foolish. That's the judgment that's upon your life. But when you turn, there's also good news. There's also good news if you read the Proverbs for the righteous, for the upright. The Bible says that praise from the upright is beautiful. That's what it says. Praise from the upright is beautiful. Upright. Upright of what? Romans 10, 15, okay. A woman must submit themselves to a man at any time. Okay. Hey, look, you're not allowed to quote the Bible. You're not allowed to quote the Bible living in sin. You cannot, you're not allowed to quote the Bible if you're living in sin. It doesn't matter. You're still living in sin. You're out here. What are you doing out here? What are you doing out here? What do you mean? You're agreeing with the wicked. The Bible says, the Bible says a friend of the world is the enemy of God. That's the wicked. No, you better turn, bro. Look, you got curses coming out of you, man. You need, you need forgiveness, man. You've been, you've been deceived. Deception in your life, man. That's what happens when you, when you live and you smoke marijuana and you, and you drink alcohol. You let the demons in your life. You got a problem? It's not me. It's not me that you have a problem with. I, I was, not, I used to live this way. I've been there. I have love in my heart towards you. I care for you. I pray for you. I don't want you to go to hell. I want you to go to heaven. I want you to experience Jesus Christ. God is love. God is love. And him, he is, he is awesome. God can forgive your sins, heal your land, give you all truth in your life. Jesus came to, to show you the way out. Came to show you. Open your light, enlighten you. Enlighten your understanding. Don't you need enlightenment? You, you, you've eaten from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And now you have evil. I care for your soul, man. Don't you understand the Bible is going to endure forever? Do you think you're going to fight against God? What happens if you take your last breath? Then what? What happens if you die in your sin? Then what are you going to do? Then you're, going to, you're going to make a case against God then? It's going to be too late. Look, look, the Bible says, the Bible says, give ear, give ear, Lord God. Consider my meditation. God is the only one who Yeah, I agree. I do agree. I do agree. Only God can judge. I'm the messenger. God sent me here. Put his word in me. I'm giving you the word of God. I speak to you the words of God. I can prove it to you. Hold on. I can prove it to you. I can prove it to you. Okay. God sent you. First John. First John chapter 2. First John. Hold on a minute. John wrote John. First John. Says, first John says this. It says, he who hears you, it says, it, it says he uh, believes in God. He knows God. Do you hear God? Make me. You're wicked. As I was saying to this guy, a messenger of Jesus Christ, I came here to give you the Bible. I was sent here by God. God proved to me, he proved to me that to preach the gospel to every creature is good. That's the Great Commission. So it says in Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You know, you're worthy of the gospel. You're worthy. You know, don't you see? The Bible says that in 1 John chapter 4, it says that those who are of God, it says, it says they... Ezekiel 16, 49. Look it up. Ezekiel 16, 49. Yes. Yes, all of scripture is given by inspiration of God. It is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for instruction, that the man of God may be perfect and entire, lacking nothing. We're out here because you're lacking something. You're lacking the testimony of Jesus Christ in your life. You need help. 
You've been given over to unclean spirits. God's trying to clean you up that you might repent and find truth in your life. That you might experience the love of God that's shed abroad in your heart. When the love of God comes on your life, you turn from your sin. You stop cursing. You fear God. You understand that if you continue to do those things, you're just digging yourself deeper into a pit. You're digging yourself into the place of destruction, the place of perdition, the place where you fade away. You're a fading leaf. You're going to be ashamed of your terabit trees that you, that you chose, that you desire. No, oh, don't you see? You, because these gardens have no water. There's no water in these gardens. They're parched. Don't you see the Bible decrees that when people do this kind of thing, they're going to bring swift destruction upon them. There's destruction coming to you and to this country because you have departed from God. We are of God, the Bible says, and those who hear us, they know God. Those who know God, they hear us. I'm concerned because you're not hearing us. But if you're of the world, you hear the world. You're hearing the world. You're agreeing with the world. You need to agree with the word, the word of God, the Bible. Came here to preach to you about the Bible. Came to tell you about what is required of you. Do you know what's required of you to go to heaven? Do you know what's required of you? You must be born again. You have to be born again of the spirit of the living God. You know what the Bible says? It says, do we, it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, it says, do we begin again to commend ourselves? Or do we need, as some others, epistles of commendation? Or do we need from you letters of commendation? For you are our epistle, written in our hearts, known and read by all men. Yeah, you're an epistle of Jesus Christ. You're, when I look at you, I know that what Jesus said is true because it's coming true. The Bible never, never stops going on. The Word of God. All the prophecies about these last days, these wicked and crooked days are coming true. You're an epistle of Jesus Christ. And you're on the wrong side of God's judgment. You're the wrong example out here. You're not an object of His mercy. Live in this way. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 17, it says, join in and following our example. And note those who so walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk, as I have told you in time past, and tell you now even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Their God is their belly. Their glory is in their shame. They mind earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven. For which we eagerly wait for the revealing of the Son of God, who will transform our lowly bodies to be conformed to His glorious body, according to the power by which He is even able to subdue all things to Himself. Jesus Christ is able to subdue everything to Himself. He can subdue you. Will you let Him deal with you as a son, a daughter? No chastening seems, seems uh, pleasant. It's, it's not joyful for the present, but afterwards it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. That's what it says in Hebrews chapter, chapter 12, verse 11. No chastening. No rebuke seems pleasant at first. Which, which, uh, which son is there whom a father... Which son is there whom a father does not correct? Who, who is a son or a daughter whom a father does not correct? How much more shall God, how much more shall the, we, we subject ourselves to the Father of spirits and live? God wants you to live. You've got to be in subjection to God. You've got to humble yourself and follow God through Jesus Christ alone. Yeah, cheer for God. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Praise God. Glory to God. Lift up his own. Jesus, Jesus, save us, save us, help us. Pour your spirit out in this place. Man, show these people. Show us all, help me. I tell you, man. We also, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, it says, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus, he despised the shame of the cross. It says, lest you become discouraged and weary in your souls, for you have not yet resisted the bloodshed in your striving against sin. Have you had to resist the bloodshed in your striving against homosexuality? Have you had to resist the bloodshed? 
You're right. He does love you. That's why he sent us here. You know how much God loves you? I'm here. I'm here because God loves you. I am here. I am the reason why God loves you. I came to show you how to be saved from God's judgment. God brings judgment. God brings judgment. God brings judgment. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says God is a just judge. He's a just judge. He's angry with the wicked every day. Are you going to turn back? Turn back. The bridge is out. The house is burning. The house is on fire. You're caught inside the house. You're going to burn to the ground. You're going to go down to the hell. You're going to go down to the pit. It's not a party in hell. You're lost. You're dying. You're choking. You're screaming and weeping and wailing. You're not going to be able to endure it. You can't endure death. You're going to die. It's going to be too late. You're going to take your last breath. Don't you see that Jesus is the one? Jesus saves. Yes, Sheila saves. God saves. God forgives. God lifts up on high. Or the Bible says in Psalms chapter 145, it says the Lord upholds all who fall. Yes, and he raises up all who are bowed down to the ground. Aren't you bowed down? Aren't you low? Aren't you to the ground? You're not falling because of your sin? God can lift you up. God can uphold you. The Bible says the eyes of all flesh look expectantly to God. The eyes of everybody. They say, God, we need your food. We need your air. We need your healing power. We need the next breath. We need you to, to give us power. Oh, you have no power in this lifestyle. You have no testimony, no witness. You're giving everything away. You're giving away all your goods to, to vanity. You're wasting everything that God's giving you because you want to live in a little fun. Look for first season. Oh, the Bible says it says evil is like sport to a fool. Evil is like sport to a fool. But then the sport ends. It. You're going to end. This lifestyle ends. You get old. You get, you get diseases. You get shame and guilt. You get, you get judged by God. God's going to make you to find an end to all your ways. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says God's going to give to you according to your works. He's going to give to you according to this lifestyle. And when you live in sin, it's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be favorable. It's not going to be glory. There's only glory in Jesus. There's only mercy found in Jesus Christ. I come to you to tell you, you can be forgiven. God's merciful. God's loving kindness. God, it says he opens his hand and he satisfies the desire of every living thing. God is righteous in all his ways. It says merciful in all his works. Oh, it says the Lord is near to those who call upon him. To those who call upon him in truth. Oh, it's true that you need. you got to get the Bible. you got to get a hold of what I'm saying here. You're not ready. You're drunk in this. You're marijuana smoking. You're cigarette smoking. It's all going to take you down. Oh, it's not something to cheer about. It's not something to cheer about. I'm not laughing up here. God did not call. I'm not laughing at you. I'm not laughing at your, 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 your issue you got. You're without Jesus Christ. It's not a laughing matter. It makes me sorrowful. It makes me, it makes me feel down in my spirit. My heart's broken because I think about how deceived people are. I think about how much you've departed from God's love. You need him to, to comfort you. God wants to comfort you. God wants to bless you. God wants to protect you. Don't you see that he can, he can help you out? He can protect you from your deadly enemies, those who rise up against you. There are many who are against you. There are many who will say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift up the light of your countenance upon us. Lord, you will put gladness in our heart more than in the season that your grain and wine have increased. God, he makes things increase, but you know what? He puts gladness in man's heart greater than that. You can go down to Walmart and see all the increase of this land, but God puts gladness in a man's heart because he loves righteousness. And he hates wickedness. That's what the testimony of Jesus Christ. You love what is good. You cling to what is good. You follow what is good. Who is good? Who is good out here? Are you good? No, I'm not good. I'm not good. There's only one who is good. Only one is good. His name is Jesus. The good shepherd who gives his life for the sheep. Jesus Christ is the good shepherd. Praise God. Praise God that he laid his life down for the sheep. He wasn't afraid of the wolf. He didn't care if it cost him his life. He said, oh, I die for the sheep. I know the sheep. The sheep know my voice. They don't follow the voice of strangers. Don't you understand? The Bible said Jesus said, all who are of the truth, they know and they hear my voice. They will not follow another. Oh, what did Pilate say? Pilate said, what is true? Jesus said, I'm the truth. I'm the way. I'm the life. He said, all who come before me are thieves and robbers. Thieves and robbers. There's a lot of robbery out here. You've been getting robbed of your reward. Oh, it says, it says, it says, children strive that you might not be robbed of your reward, that you might receive a full reward. 
Oh, because it says he transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ, does not have God, and does not have Jesus. Oh, but whoever abides in the doctrine of Christ has both God and has Jesus. If you want God and you want Jesus, then you've got to abide in his doctrine. Nina is the word. You make your home in that. You plant yourself in the house of God. Do you have the fruit of God in your life? You gotta be a tree planted by the waters. You gotta be planted by the living waters of God. Jesus Christ is the living water. Jesus said, Jesus said, He said, whoever drinks of this water that I give to him, it says, will become in him a spring of water, springing up to everlasting life in John chapter 4. I want you to, fit, to drink this water that I'm talking about. You can drink other kinds of water. You can drink alcohol. But it's not going to spring up to everlasting life. Why? Because Jesus Christ, he poured himself out. He poured himself out. As a drink offering. The Bible says, do not be deceived. The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Neither adulterer, neither idolater, neither sexually immoral, neither sodomite, neither homosexual offender, neither drunkard, neither extortioner, neither thief, neither thief, huh? neither reviler, no reviler, no reveler, no partier gets into God's kingdom, you know that? The only party in heaven is the when the angels rejoice when sinners repent. When sinners repent and they break their heart before God and God comes and blesses them with repentance, remission of sins, then a party happens in heaven. Party in heaven. You can talk to these guys. I came to preach the gospel. Woe unto me if I don't preach the gospel for necessity is laid upon me. Oh, for we give thanks to God. It says, for we have been approved by God, even so we speak. God, he approved me. I don't know why. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to be here. But you know what? God did put his spirit in me. I have the Holy Spirit. I've repented of my sins. It's a miracle. It's a miracle that I'm here today. And I live and follow in the, in the light. God has blessed me. God keeps me. God is my keeper. I don't keep myself. The Bible says, He who keeps Israel will neither sleep, nor will he slumber. Those who keep you, God keeps the righteous. He keeps the righteous from harm. I carry you, man. I, I want to see you make it to heaven. 